Hello, everyone. I'm Jane Alexander, and I'm delighted to be paying tribute to this evening's first great hero of the UN 75 history, Eleanor Roosevelt. A lady whom I had the privilege of playing in two TV dramas some years ago. Well, whatever you feel about her, she was a towering figure of the 20th century. The first US ambassador to the UN, chair of the commission that created the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, lifelong campaigner for the rights and freedoms of the dispossessed. I'm going to read some extracts from the great speech she gave in Paris on the struggle for human rights. But first, let me tell you a little bit about her. Her marriage to Franklin produced six children and made her the longest serving first lady of the United States. Because of her husband's paralysis, she often represented him at public meetings and gave campaign speeches on his behalf. She also encouraged him in his dream of setting up a United Nations organization. But she was her own woman with strong views of her own. She wrote a weekly newspaper column for most of her adult life, as well as doing hundreds of radio programs and public speeches. It was her work in drafting the UN Declaration of Human Rights for which she will be best remembered. It was not easy, but her experience, her charm, her determination got it passed in the UN General Assembly. As the Chinese representative remembered, she was marvelous, really. From the very first days, she led us, cajoled us, and for some of us, well, mothered us. The Soviet delegate was perhaps closer to the truth when he said of her, never have I seen naivete and cunning so gracefully blended. I like to think that no man could have done what she did. It was an impossible task. Here's how she explained those difficulties in that famous Paris speech. I have come this evening to talk with you on one of the greatest issues of our time, the preservation of human freedom. I have chosen to discuss it here in France because here on this soil, the roots of human freedom have long ago struck deep and been richly nourished. It was here the Declaration of the Rights of Man was proclaimed and the great slogans of the French Revolution, liberty, equality, fraternity, fired the imagination of women and men. Like them, the basic premise of the UN Charter is that the peace and security of all human beings is dependent on mutual respect for the rights and freedoms of all. The battle we are fighting in the world today is for the preservation of human freedom for the individual. This battle was fought at the time of the French Revolution and at the time of the American Revolution. And we are fighting this battle again today as the issue of human liberty is as decisive now as it was then. Stalin's chief legal advisor, Andrei Vyshinsky, told me long ago that there was no such thing as individual freedom. All freedom, he said, for the individual is conditioned by the rights of other individuals. That, of course, I granted. But, I said, we approach the question from a different point of view. Our declaration aims to make men and women, not governments, more free. The totalitarian state typically places the will of the people second to decrees promulgated by a few men at the top. It's not going to be easy to attain unanimity with respect to our different concepts of government and human rights. It is now, as always, our hope that despite the wide differences in approach we face in the world today, we can, through honest discussion and negotiation, with mutual good faith in the principles of the UN Charter, arrive at a common basis of understanding. As one of the delegates from the United States, I pray almighty God that we may win here in this beautiful city of Paris, another victory for the rights and freedoms of all women and men.
When she died, Adlai Stevenson said, what other single human being has touched and transformed the lives of so many? She would rather light a candle than curse the darkness, and her glow has warmed the world. <laughs>